Good morning, beautiful people. It's about 3 a.m. in the morning. Just about to go to bed. And um, I just walked outside and I was just pondering in my mind. I was just construing the idea. What is wealth? You know, what, what, what is wealth? We all think and talk about wealth, but what is it really? And... So I'm drinking my blue lotus tea with a bit of lemon in it and I was just, just wondering is wealth comfort you know is, is wealth having a heater and a comfy bed and is it having nice things is wealth having possessions you know is it is it having possessions is it having freedom um, or, or, or you know, enough resources to, to be able to live free. What is wealth? You know, is, is it money? Is it, is it, is it, um, knowledge? Is knowledge wealth? You know, is, is, is true knowledge and, and wisdom and, and understanding and empathy is that wealth um, and, and I was sort of you now I looked up at the stars and I'm like is it is is it spirit and then I turn around the other way and I'm like is it soul is is soul wealth and as soon as I said is it soul I saw this shooting star go straight across the sky and I'm thinking soul soul is true wealth and perhaps soul is true wealth because depending on your definition of soul but I, I i think soul or i feel like soul is the interconnected web of universal consciousness that is everything connected together right it's like soul is is that knowing and that feeling that the feeling without having to think of, of universal connectedness you know um and and that would make sense that that would be true wealth because if we have universal connectedness if we have soul if we feel what others are feeling if we're connected to other spirits and we feel what they feel without thinking about it without you know thinking that we should feel sorry for them because you know society tells us we should feel sorry or feel bad but it's it's actually feeling something without even thinking about it it's that initial it's that natural organic response you know that's maybe what empathy you know it's it's feeling something it's not saying and talking about it it's actually it's just that feeling in the moment where you're feeling something else's it could be pain it could be joy positive or negative or somewhere in between it doesn't matter but you're feeling what that other being that other sentient being is is feeling or experiencing or you're having a, a reaction to that um, you know because you're connected to that spirit or that other sentient being so you're just feeling directly without thinking about it because society tells you you should think that that's you know I think that's what soul is about you know it's it's Yeah, I don't know. I didn't write anything down for this video, so I just thought I would let it um, let it flow. But you know, what is wealth then? You know, it's is it money and things in this realm, or is it the that soul, that connectedness to all things? And may, is that true wealth because of the value that if we're connected to everything in this life, um, then we're also connected to everything in the next life, or the or the spiritual realm or whatever you want to call it you know the afterlife or um 
if we're all connected in this life and we're feeling that and we're conscious and we're soulful and we act in a soulful way based on how our soul tells us we should act, not based on how other people tell us we should act, but we act according to what our soul, what our inside tells us, um, you know, without thinking about it too much. I think, I think in today's society we think too much. What would other people say? What does the government say? What does what would my friends say? What would my family say? You know, we, we sort of we talk ourselves out of or into these things that our soul already knows the answer to, you know? <clears throat> I'm just going to have some more of my blue lotus tea. Steve J. Sleep says, wealth is time and what you choose to do with time. So that would imply almost, Steve, I think or feel that that would also imply that uh, wealth, because time really can only be attributed to the physical realm because it's only in the physical realm that time can be measured through the use of cycles, you know, be it natural cycles or day or night or the clock or whatever it will be. It can only be measured through physical, um, physical means. But in the other realm where there's no matter, yeah, there's no time because there's nothing to measure the time by when there's no material cycles. So, if wealth is time or, or life, because wealth is, time is life, right? I think time is like, time is life because it can only be measured in life. Yeah, it doesn't exist without life or, or matter to withstand the life, you know? Um, so if wealth is time, then wealth is life and it's a material thing. But what about the wealth or the experience after the material realm, you know? So I don't know if wealth can be, yes, time is, is, is valuable. It's the most valuable thing we have in life because it is life. So it is, it is, yeah, one of the highest forms of wealth in this life, I guess. You're absolutely right. But I think it also goes beyond this life and beyond time beyond time and space it goes into another realm so we can have wealth in this realm which can be measured by life or material life carbon yeah in any form whatever form it is or it can be measured by something like the soul that is everlasting that is without matter and without time um, and if, if we can bring wealth to that, that's everlasting, I think. I hope this is making sense. Manny says to love and be loved. And love is, is a state of being, yes, is a frequency. Um, frequency, yes, that's, that's without matter. That's everlasting, you know, love is a, a frequency, a vibration, it's, it's without matter, so it doesn't get, it's not, it's, it's uninterrupted, it's everlasting, yeah, like a, like a ripple in the water, you know, will just keep going until it meets the required resistance to stop that ripple from moving, right, like a wave in the ocean. Although it can dissipate over time as well, time and space through resistance, I suppose. So maybe there's no resistance in there. So it might be everlasting, you know. So love is a good one. Love, love's, love's a nice one. But it's about the soul. Knowing the soul knowing the interconnectedness of the soul, of your soul to all sentient being souls. Um, 
and that we're all tied in that afterlife. We're all tied by that spirit. But I guess if we put all of our belief, all of our being, all of our essence or our vibration, because that's what we are, right? We're vibrational beings as well um, in the physical or our vibration is, is creating our physical and external, our reaction. Um, so I guess if you put all of your wealth in material things and nothing in the soul, then you may have wealth for a time being, but if it's not everlasting, Maybe it's not the highest form of wealth, you know? And do you need to create that frequency, that everlasting soul, that soulful frequency that's everlasting? Do you need to create that in the physical time and space before you move out of it or, um, or can it come after? An interesting question. Manny says, nourishment of wonderful things. Yeah, and that's beautiful too. And that's good for the soul, you know. Um, having having access to all, all things that are natural that you should have access to at any time you, you, you choose to, you know. That's a natural, um, natural nourishment for the soul, yeah. I suppose that's why surfing is, is is so nourishing for the soul because you're connected with, well, I don't know, nature, the frequency of nature, the harmony of nature. And if it's a, a, a rough day, the energy is a bit more grotty and a bit more grumbly in the people. But if it's a beautiful, clean day on the surf, everyone's happy and clean in the, in the frequency and the... The vibration of the people is a lot different, you know, it's it's a lot higher, a lot a lot happier. And I suppose it's the same even if you're not surfing, if you're just out and about and it's a nice day, people are a lot happier when it's a nice day. So anyway, rambling on, dust is white asleep. Ions from the ocean, yeah, ions from the water of the ocean coming out. But wealth, what is wealth? It's a good question. The universe thinks it's the soul. Because when I went outside and was asking the question and I said, is it the soul? Um, that was the last thing I asked. And as soon as I did that, a shooting star went. So... It seems the universe or, or the stars think that it's the soul that is the true wealth. So I guess if the soul is the true wealth, then the soul is what we need to be paying our attention to. Yeah, because that's where the true wealth lies, which means that the true wealth lies inside but which is also once we're soulful or have our soul filled, we're also experiencing the external as well. Um, because we're in that state of oneness, I guess. So we're experiencing all the others as well. I guess that's why it's so important to to... assist um, other souls, you know, because we, we're all connected to them anyway, you know. Even if we wanted to, we couldn't escape what's going on, you know. We can't not feel it. Nourish the soul. Nourish the soul, Sean says. Yes, nourish the soul. Nature. Do things you love. Be around people you love. And nourish the soul. It's important. That's the wealth. Not the materials. Not the money. Not the status. 
the soul. Steve says, surf comes in sets. Frequently. It's everywhere. Frequency, yeah. Yeah, well, that's right. They come in sets too, you know. The surf is in sets. It's, it's the pulses of energy moving through the water. It's not actually, you know, when a wave is forming, it's not actually the... The water moving it's just the energy moving through the water um, and as the energy moves up the beach I guess the energy gets pushed up you know as the energy gets closer to the shore the energy wave actually gets lift, lifted up um, which means it's encountering and experiencing a resistance of the sand you know uh, different to how it's experiencing the resistance of the water. So, interesting. But yes, yeah, so every, everything is frequency, and, and even those even those frequencies we can't see, like a wave, you know, like that energy pulse that's moving through, right? The energy pulse that's moving through the water, we can't see it, but it can cause the biggest wave. Or, you know, a tidal wave. It could, it could cause any sort of wave, you know. Um, so I guess that's an analogy of how powerful frequencies and, and energetic waves moving through the atmosphere or the earth that we can't even see. I guess, you know, a wave is a good idea of getting... A good way of getting an idea or a perception of the power of a frequency wave or, or you know that 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 impulse of energy moving through that we can't see but it has such a big effect you know could be coming from the Sun yeah Sol solar flares could be coming from the moon, could be coming from other planets. You know, we see the ones coming through the water because they form waves. We see those energy sort of lines, you know, because they come in waves and they, they affect the matter that we can see. What about the ones we can't see that don't come from just the earth? You know, they have a big effect as well. They must be getting some solar waves coming through or something. Maybe it's this Blue Lotus T. My Crystal Galaxy Design Model. Blue Lotus T is supposed to be really good for um, sleeping and, you know, experiencing. So anyway, it's pretty late. I'm sure most people are asleep. Thanks for watching and your comments, guys. I'm going to keep this one short. Please share it if you liked it. If not, I don't know. I'll probably watch it tomorrow and go, what were you thinking? But um, yeah, I hope it made sense. Anyway, we'll catch up soon. Many blessings and much love from the Ark.